I'm old enough to have grown up in an age when the word cancer was barely uttered. It was a dirty, ugly word that uh, meant death more often than not just 30 years ago. Uh, I feel very fortunate to live in a time where so many people do survive and where people with horrible, horrible situations uh, manage to be walking among us and live long, healthy lives with uh, hopefully a better appreciation of that life. Um, at the same time, it seems like uh, I have met more people since having cancer who have had cancer. I don't know if it's just the fact that it, it comes up in conversation and someone will confide, well, gee, I've had cancer too. And uh, just like when you buy a red car and suddenly you see you know, how many red cars there are on the road with just to go to cancer, they don't know what causes it to this day. Uh, again, I just feel very fortunate that I had it when I had it because as recently as 20 years ago, the mortality rate was through the roof for this, and now it's down to just 3 or 4 or 5%, something. I've probably had at least a dozen men come up to me, though, and say, uh, how did you know? Uh, because they were having maybe a bit of testicular pain or something, or or we're just feeling generally paranoid or heard about my situation or someone else's and so I've uh, passed around how to examine oneself uh, to, to a number of men have been you know, concerned about that. It's one of those things where I think as recently as 10 or 15 years ago to say the word testicle in public would only uh, you know get a giggle or an embarrassment and I know you know, even 25, 30 years ago, to, to, use, to talk about breast cancer by using the word breast suddenly, uh, you know, in, in this society, you know, oh my God, that's sexual. That's, that's something we're not supposed to talk about or look at or think about. And it's like, wait a minute, this is just an organ, life death. And as the years go by and people get a little more mature about these things, there are fewer and fewer snickers when talking about uh, such body parts. Well, there's a lot of cancer in the family to begin with, uh, so me getting it was not that surprising to begin with. Um, and again, it, it's one of those things that to worry about it is, is futile. It, it's, uh, they're all going to go one day, maybe before me, maybe after me. Uh, you know, I'm dealing with my parents being 82 years old right now and certain inevitabilities there. You know, we're living in this hallmark age and everybody's uh, got a big smile on their face in every ad you see and life goes on and nothing's ever bad and uh, um, people going to extraordinary measures to keep you know 98 year old grandma who hasn't uttered a word in six years alive just because you know that as long as that heart's ticking we've got her uh, there's an over sentimentality about it at all that uh, just leads to absolute fear of it that people just need to get over. Um, and in a lot of other cultures, I, I think they handle it much, much better. You know, I think to really live, you've got to accept your own mortality in a, in a huge way to really go out and enjoy life as, as much as you can. My name is Patrick. I'm a six and a half year testicular cancer survivor.